Okay, welcome everyone. I'm about to start. I thank you very much for being here. Um, and what I want to talk about is, again, one um, experiences I made during during my life hacking the kernel and being a Linux kernel maintainer. And this should not be a classical lecture, so I'm all the time open for comments, for criticism or other opinions. But uh, I gathered some facts I wanted to share with you, uh, also some impressions. And um, yeah, you will learn that, uh, or you will see that I learned GNU plot the last day, so we will have some graphs, so I could fake my own statistics finally. Um, and yeah, um, I want to give some recommendations. I'd like to hear some recommendations or some ideas about a scaling problem. And let's start with the first graph already, which is uh, not surprising. Uh, starting the, my statistics start usually from Linux kernels 3.0 until to 3.10. Um, and the number of patches has significantly increased. We deal to, we have to deal with a lot more patches uh, which are entering the kernel, which is totally good. I'm totally happy that uh, people are, especially companies, are working way more with upstream than they used to. And uh, this is what we long aimed for, but now it's about to take the next step, I think. So, pretty easy. I, I don't think it's surprising to you. We have an increased number of patches. What I think is a bit more interesting, also so far not very surprising, we have also more contrib contributors. The, the patches must come from someone after all. It's not only huge patch series, which we also see, but we have just an uh, increased number of patch authors. This is the red line. The, blue, uh, the green line, uh, I, I all took the data from, from, Git, from the Git repository, so um, you could check for yourself. I just grabbed for committers, for the committers tag. The number of committers, those people who actually um, take care that a patch enters some tree, so it will finally end up in the mainline kernel tree, yeah, well, it has increased a little. <laughs> but not at the same scale, and as you can also see, there's a, a huge gap already. I mean, there, the number of people, uh, of contribute, new contributors, is nearly as much as the people of committers we have. So we have roughly 200 new authors, and we have these days roughly 200 people who are in charge of committing patches to some trees. That's a huge gap. and. Uh, I took the freedom to, to lay a spline through all these data points to see the slope, how it's increasing. The gap is getting bigger. And this is uh, the scaling problem, the basic outline of the scaling problem. And I, th I think if we want to maintain the high quality of Linux we, we all adore, we have to pay attention. It's not like uh, it's... I don't want to play, uh, create a picture like Titanic. Tomorrow there's an iceberg and tomorrow we're all gone. But I think it's, it really pays off to take this into account and uh, take the next step and do some, do some measures. So the next step would be what can we do to uh, help maintainers dealing with that amount of patches and amount of new people. One thing to remember when, when, what, when dealing with those graphs is that it's only based on accepted patches. That will also be true for later graphs. For every accepted patch, there's usually some additional work to be done. There are superseded patches which have been before the final patch is accepted. The uh, maintainer has to deal with patches which are bogus. You have to reject them and, and sometimes in lengthy explanations to do why you reject a patch. This is all not covered in these graphs. And, this, and especially with all these new, new authors coming, there's a lot of teaching going on. That is somehow uh, inherent to the process, but it's still to be 
worth re to be remembered that it's also a maintainer's job these days uh, teach the new authors, uh, introduce them to the subsystem, and which is taking quite some time. And since the graphs started from version 3.0, don't assume that the situation at version 3.0 was ideal. It was not. It was already challenging at that time. And from that challenging, challenging situation, it got worse. And I expect to get it even worse, or how we can put it, more of a challenge, what, how, how you ever want to put it. The question is, I, I, or I got the question, I got is how can we support maintainers, can we offload some of the work from them, other than uh, trying to attract new maintainers, which is of course the number one idea of solving that problem. And I remembered an uh, uh, email post uh, John Mickelbus once said what, when, we, when there was a discussion on the Kernel Summit 2012 mailing list about the role of a maintainer. He mentioned these roles. I, I don't want to read them out. You can read on your own. A kernel maintainer is really a, a special set of jobs doing in one person, which is okay. But I think it's still worth uh, remembering that it's, it's this collection of, of um, tasks a maintainer is doing. And it's okay doing that collection. It's not easy to rip out one task and say, okay, this one person is the only uh, responsible for being a patch reviewer and this one person is being uh, responsible for being the committer. So the number one rule is get more maintainers who like to, um, to do all these jobs at once. One, one way of supporting them with reviewing has been tried and it's not bad at all. It's uh, inventing the uh, reviewed bytes or tested by tags which are really, really helpful. And so, oh, I'll come to them later. First thing to notice about with all these uh, qualities, it's a rare bunch of people who like doing all these things at once. But the good thing is if, if you found such a person, they usually really enjoy doing it. Um, so it's worth supporting them. And uh, really, try if you're a developer who sometimes faces difficulties with with a maintainer. Um, I'm not saying you should o obey to him or her all the time, but uh, keep in mind that there's a bunch of rules this person has to play, and this is not only f not only the uh, the role of a developer like you. So it's also sometimes the role of a, of a uh, software ar architect which has to foresee things for the next 10 years. And uh, with that role, you sometimes have important, see other things as important than you. So I, th I then wondered how the, um, how much people would donate reviewed bias and tested by text, which are really helpful to a maintainer. Because it makes, for me, it makes a difference if it's just a patch and I don't know if anybody is using it, if it's causing, if it's solving a generic problem or just a problem for this one person. So the two, new two lines uh, are the people who do, number of people donating reviewed by or tested by text without being a committer themselves. So people who just give reviewed and tested by text. And you see, um, sadly, it's about the same range of people like committers. It's just about 200 people during res uh, the last kernel revisions donating these tags, which is a pity, pity because a number of people think that every patch entering the kernel should have at least one of those tags, but we're far from it. So um, if you're a developer or so, it, it, this might be uh, another chance to, to help the situation. 
I also took the slope, slope graphs here. Not too much surprising. There is some increase, but all in all, it doesn't match the uh, increase of the number of new authors, which, as I said before, has to be trained. They have to be trained. They have to be educated. And uh, there's still a gap. It's, uh, those people are doing great work, but we need more of them. Um, a simple system on chip, probably most of you know that already, it doesn't have even a fancy GPU or something. I just wanted to show, to just uh, bring back to your mind how many subsystems are involved. Because if you want to have complete for, uh, support for a complete SOC, you will have lots of subsystems involved. Ethernet, UART, SPI, SDMMC, the processor itself, the flash, and whatnot. And I wanted to check how the different subsystems involved in supporting an SOC deal with the increased amount of patches. And yeah, in generally how they do. It's so, um, also f interesting for me how I do as <laughs> I2C subsystem maintainer. So, so I looked at the sy subsystem, I had the feeling, which is working very fast, in applying patches, and that was uh, the Ethernet subsystem uh, for the net Ethernet drivers. So what does this graph tell you? Okay, oh. it's an accumulative graph. So it says, where's my laser pointer here? Uh, it counts all commits from version 3.0 to 3.10, which was an am amazing amount of over 5,000 commits. And 85% of all the patches accepted uh, had been on for maximum 28 days on the list. So after 28, if the patch has been posted after 28 days, there was an 85% chance um, that it was accepted. Four weeks. And I think this graph is pretty much what most people want. They want to put. Uh, from a developer side of view and also from the maintainers, usually you want to push out a patch and get a prompt response. And I think the uh, Ethernet subsystem is very good at this. If you look, even after two weeks, you're at 80%, and after one week, you're somewhere around 70%. So prompt response, uh, that uh, ensures fluid development. Then I took another subsystem, I had, I'm not bashing. Yeah? I, I know all these maintainers are doing a great work. It just happens if they're paid to do this work, how many resources they have, what they have else to do. And there was a subsystem. I had the feeling, okay, it's a good bit slow there. And that was the MTD subsystem. And this graph looks like this. So here, after 28 days, just a bit more than 50% of the patches has, had been applied. Of course, there might be the case that there are more complicated patches or not, but I think we can assume that there's always a set of, of trivial patches and a set of more complicated patches. And this is four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. Let's say this is roughly a kernel cycle. So after one kernel cycle, uh, we are at 82%. So there are nearly 20% of patches which need more than a complete kernel cycle uh, to enter the MTD subsystem, according to the stats from 3.0 on. And this is, of course, not, not so good for fluid development, and I think this is really which needs improvement. Again, I'm not bashing the uh, MTD maintainers. They do what they can, but uh, they also have to deal with quite an amount of patches. There's a question? Yeah, on the other end, uh, in my feeling, the Net subsystem is also one of the subsystems where a lot of patches enter unreviewed with bugs and a lot of reworks or rework um, needed after the fact that they entered the mainline kernel. Because it, yeah. yeah, I understand the maintainer doesn't have the bandwidth to review all those patches, but he's 
applying them really, really fast without other people having the chance to review them. Uh, yeah, that's that, no, no. It's true. I wanted to talk about it late, later, but I can do right now. Um, did everybody hear that? Should I repeat? No complaints. Okay. Um, interestingly, the driver section of the network subsystem is unmaintained. Uh, if you look in the maintainers file, it's marked as odd fixes. So, um, just throwing the random fix in. There's no no dedicated maintainer for it. And yeah, their approach to solve that is if there's a patch on the list and looks somewhat reasonable and there's no complaint, it will be applied. So this is one, maybe not for the CAN subsystem. <laughs> um, this is one way of pushing the pressure, which is usually on the maintainer, back to the developers. Because uh, if you're uh, in the network subsystem active and, now, and you know if you're not going to react on, react on that patch, of your, although you have doubts, you have to be fast. Otherwise, it will accept, accept it and you have to clean up and all not. This is one way to deal with it. Uh, I still haven't made up my mind if it's a proper solution for every subsystem. But uh, yeah, that's one thing to be aware of, yeah. Yeah. There are there are in fact some sub sub systems in the uh, networking like wireless or can or in the USB stuff. They have all sub maintainers, so yeah. they have their own lists and uh, then they push it to the Melan who's in charge for the networking. Exactly. And taking over maintainership of a single driver is a good way to start gaining experience of, of maintaining that would be a good start. So where am I? Surprisingly, I'm in the middle. <laughs> Actually, I thought to be worse. But uh, given that I do all that in my free time, I'm quite satisfied. Maybe some developers are not, because sometimes I, after four weeks, I still have about 80% applied. But... Uh, for me, as a as a uh, person working privately on that, I think this is a a pretty good scale for somebody who is uh, having a deadline because a SOC needs to be pushed mainline. This might be uh, not good enough, and there we have a bit of conflicting interests. Or well, but that's how the situation is currently. And now. Yep. Does it mean that you are replying the first email and pushing back to the developer that the first release is always bad? Once again, please, slower. Uh, if, you, if you look at the, the graph, you yeah. have, then you have a low percentage get the code to your tree uh, in, a, in, a, in a some days. It means, does it mean that you are pushing the first series back to the developer and they say, hey, this can be wrong, you can, you can look at your page yeah, I, uh, I usually wait for a few days if somebody who's, I mean, I have, I have more than 70 drivers for, different, for I2C masters over different SOCs. I usually don't have the hardware anyhow, and most of the patches are dealing with hardware-specific uh, issues. <coughs> so I'll just wait if some user shows up and says yes, no, perhaps. That's one thing. The other thing is... Um, I stopped monitoring the lists daily. I just can't afford that at the moment. I'd, li I'd, I'd love to, because there are some patches who re would really improve for, by replying immediately. But that would mean lots of context switches for me during the day, so I can't focus on other things. And the current situation for me, it doesn't allow that. So I, uh, I, I glimpse through the mailing list every day if there's something urgent. And then usually I work I take one free uh, one weekend or something like this and work in a bulk on, on patches. How do you identify urgent? Uh, urgent means uh, if I need to apply it to the current uh, 
current uh, Linux tree. So I have I have two branches for current for the current LC series and the for next, which goes into the next cycle. And urgent is uh, stuff which needs to go into for current. So the patch description should make clear hey, we're dealing with a bug here and it needs to be fixed right now and also mention if it should go to stable that I call urgent. Or there's another thing, if it's part of a cross subsystem cleanup or subsystem work where they need my egg, other, otherwise the whole bunch of work would stall. I call this also urgent. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, okay, I, I collected some more subsystems, and uh, this gets a, a little bit messy. The nice thing is that most subsystem here's again the one one release cycle uh, border. Most subsystems manage to get 95 or more percent of their patches into their trees within one release cycle. That's pretty good. Yet, I wanted to focus... Oh, yeah, another question? Um, I'm wondering all the time about this uh, quick increase uh, after 15 weeks in the LP system. Uh, if I understand this correctly, this is basically at the end of the merge window after the release cycle. Is this correct? Here we have... This, this in I could imagine uh, that after one um, merge window has closed and you've worked on, on the merge window, you still have some free time to prepare ne the next one already. That's my assumption. Another idea might be that they have a pull request at the beginning. Oh, that would be two weeks. Could be they have a pull request at the beginning of the merge window, and then they fix up for, with another pull request at the end. But still, also keep in mind that three months is a very loose release cycle. It could be something else. Coming back here, uh, what I was interested a little bit more is that uh, the quick response time. So I just concentrated on the first four weeks to have that more, more visible. And uh, where are we in? Yeah, most subsystems manage to have half of the patches accepted uh, within the first two weeks. Uh, I don't want to comment too much about it. It's just a matter of fact these days. These days. I wonder a bit of the rule of some. Some people are told, telling new authors, well, if you got, didn't get a response, ping after a week. Maybe we should increase it a little bit. Because we are still talking only about accepted patches. There's lots more about it. There's rejected patches. There's superseded patches. There's uh, architectural decisions about the subsystems as a whole. There's a lot more to it. So the, the dream would be to be more like this without, a pack, without accepting junk. <laughs> Uh, the fact is we are, in, in, in general, we are here and there are some subsystems having problems here. And my idea is, uh, it's, the tendency is it's getting worse. Yeah, I said most of that already. Stats are only based on Excel. Yeah, what I also found out, sadly, again, for the MTD subsystem, um, and the process patches are lost. Uh, I found some totally valid bug fixes which would cause oops if not fixed, which are simply overlooked. And uh, that's also a sad story, but I, you know, uh, I couldn't find a way to measure that. It's really hard to, to, for me at least, to scan mailing list and make assumptions about what is related to what mail and what is a superseded patch and how has it been accepted. I couldn't find a measure, but 
no surprise, it's uh, easily understandable that if you have overloaded, it's also easy to miss out patches, which can really fix bugs. In my weather forecast, situations if there's not much of a change will get worse. So I expect either increased latency in the subsystems or questionable patches going in. We had that a little bit, especially with device trees, uh, device tree drivers when maintainers were too overloaded and too surprised what they, what they should do with all those device tree bindings. What bindings? What are bindings? And so uh, some device tree bindings entered the kernel we now have problems with. So what, what can we do? I um, see if Targeting, I'm targeting a few groups here. The first one I called users, but not users of the kernel directly, but um, people who like maintain BSPs, for example, do kernel updates, kernel updates for customers without really writing uh, code themselves. I know these people are out there. And to those, I'd say it's really helpful if you if you give comments about patches, if you use them. Say, hey, we have this product and we're using this patch set because the driver is missing the feature. Or um, this patch is working great, but it still misses to catch this situation. All that kind of information is useful because for a maintainer, I think it's very difficult if you have a patch somebody wants to get into and there's no reaction on it. And I solely have to make the decision. Uh, well, I'm trained to do this, but it really helps if other people are, are giving comments about that. And if you really tested that and um, it works fine, con consider giving these tested by tags to check other mails, uh, they're getting more and more public, uh, how to use that. This increases the trust for me that this patch is worth applying and I don't have to spend so much, maybe not so much time reviewing, reviewing its usefulness. And if you're using a patch over and over, if you're updating the kernel and still use patch, a patch which seems valid to you and you still use it, um, please also consider resending it. It might have gotten lost. Check if old mail threads, if there are some comments which are not, have not been addressed. Uh, most of the time it's easy stuff like a formal, formal style of patches which can be easily fixed. And don't hesitate to resend them. So they're not lost anymore and can fix the things and people will know what, what they want of the drivers. That would be a good start. <clears throat> um, for developers, I'd like to keep the amount of superseded patches low. So and one thing to achieve that is always give your best shot. Um, there's nothing wrong if you don't know the subsystem and don't know how to do it and just try around. That's, that's what the maintainer is also for. Maybe the list will help or maybe the maintainer. There's nothing wrong with not knowing things. I think there's something wrong with being sloppy. So with just, ah, well, that's good enough. Uh, I know the optimum solution would be something else, but I'm just too late. It's too much to type or I, I don't know what. Um, this is really annoying. And then to convince people to do it properly sometimes costs more time than doing it properly right from the start. So my wish here is really to always give your best shot. Always try to think to yourself, okay, is this really the, the best solution for now? Yes, I know best is a subjective term. And uh, gain the, from the benefit is that it will make you a better de develop, developer after all. And if you know that your solution is not the opti optimal one, uh, be honest about it. I don't like if people try to sell me things, cheap things, and praising it like it would, would be the best thing. There are, and, uh, I do understand, there are cases where the suboptimal sub solutions are good enough. If there's an ancient driver which is hardly used anymore and it's in a way for a cleanup, no, I won't force you to rewrite the driver, uh, then the less intrusive solution will be good enough. That's what I'm aiming for in some old PowerPC driver to clean up my subsystem. I do understand that, 
But as I said, be honest about it. Uh, I think I usually will understand, but don't try to sell me something. So I will. I have to find out that uh, there's something else going on. That just costs time. And of course, as you have uh, the inside of the hardware and obviously work with the driver or with the core, uh, I'd love if developers taking part in quality assurance. That means I'd be really happy if they could review other patches. I'd be really happy if they, before they send out their own patches, would do a review on their own patches as it would have been from someone else. That catches a lot of things. <laughs> um, but also reviewing other people's codes is, well, that's how the community works. You get to know other people, you get a better programmer, you get learn about new techniques. It pays off. Um, take part in discussions, especially when it comes to subsystem architectural things, because then there's, for me it's really important <coughs> to know what people want of my subsystem, so I need feedback on that. It's really hard to do that quietly with no one stating opinions. And also, don't be shy, take up in, in cleanup and consolidation, which is favored all among the kernel. It's not only part of the uh, responsibility of the maintainers to do that. And if all that caught you on fire, Try being a maintainer. I said, if, if it's for you and you feel challenged by this, get a driver or try being out a co-maintainer for some subsystem and check what's involved. And if it's good for you, chances are that it, that it really is. What can maintainers do? Do we have maintainers in the room here? Yay, hooray, welcome. That's good because, I mean, Kernel Summit is taking place, so I expect it to be all maintainers, <laughs> or a lot of them over there, probably. Happy to have you here. My first advice is, uh, yeah, work harder not. Um, from my experience, most maintainers are quite busy already. And um, I know it feels bad if you get lots of patches coming in and uh, you want to do those people who are doing drivers and who finally took part in, in contributing to Linux to do them a favor and accept their patches. But uh, don't let this be carry out, carried out on your back. There's no, nobody gains anything if you have a burnout. And we have to face it, there, there are lots of vendors adding coming to the game and uh, they release so many SSCs that I, I do wonder why so many are needed, but it's their decision. I, and as Linus Valley often says, they're constantly pressing the fa fast forward button. And that's what I agree, but you, you don't have to accept it. If it's too much for one person, then it's too much for one person. Dot. Then we have to find other ways of dealing with all the issues. Work harder is, is an argument you can all, could always say, but I don't think it helps. Of course, uh, if you're really lazy, then working harder might help, but I, <laughs> I have yet to see a really, really lazy maintainer. I'm thinking again. No. <laughs> and keep your uh, amount of manual work to a minimum, like with every good craftsmanship, have your tools ready. Mm, there's no standard way of being a maintainer. I found out when, when I became one. There's no ready set of tools because it's about a workflow and everyone has their, his or her own workflow. So you need to make up your own workflow, but do chat with other maintainers. What tools do they use? How do they solve a problem? This or that bet might be useful for you. And my top three recommendations, sometimes simple things, but made life a lot easier. First is keyboard shortcuts. Um, I, I'm surprised maintainers typing signed off by or act by. I have two keyboard macros for that to make that short. I have even complete emails on a 
on a short keyboard shortcut because issues are coming over and over again and I don't want to rephrase when teaching people all the time. That really helps already. Uh, okay, of course, that's what most people use. Uh, Git hooks or whatever kind of hooks uh, are, are pretty useful. Do some automatic testing before you apply patches to your trees. Do some testing before you send out or what. Um, this can save you a lot of work and especially a lot of work which you otherwise would forget. That's obvious but still good. And uh, I like Patchwork, which is a web-based service which collect, tracks mailing lists. Uh, I will give you a short example. Due to the low resolution, it looks a bit uh, not so nice. So it scans the I2C mailing list. Everything which has patch or pull request in it will be tracked. And uh, so that prevents that something gets lost, as long as uh, uh, correct my mailing list was on CC. And when I go to a patch directly, I have some uh, data at the beginning, and I have, I have the complete mail thread <coughs> and the patch at the end. So this is, it doesn't depend where I am. I have all the information I need uh, to review patches, and I can set that status, acknowledge, uh, accepted, rejected, superseded. And this, uh, this my I2C's list is set up so that it will automatically notify users if I change the state. And what I really love is it's all these small details. There's a command line utility to get the patches from the database. So if I will go back, okay, can't really see. It has this magic number. And maybe, uh, no, you haven't seen, but there in the mail thread there were people who, having, who have added the reviewed by tag. And now I, ha I have a command line client which I, where, which with I can get the <coughs> patch from the net as a, in an mbox format, so I could immediately apply it to git. And now see here, it collected all the text for me. This is awesome, I love that. <laughs> And the, um, yeah, have your tools ready, look out what's there. Uh, that can save you a bunch of time so you can concentrate on, on the real tasks. So what do you think about Garrett? Kind of next level side-by-side lips -side and uh, web-based uh, reviewing and all this stuff. Have you thought about it? No, I haven't. I know that people are using it happily. I haven't felt the need to have it yet. It's not my set. It's not my tool, obviously, because I, uh, I didn't feel a need for it. But I know people um, are using it, so um, I think it's worth checking out. Though. But what needs to be done to make it acceptable for for use in kernel? I mean, it's. I would need to find out. It solves a problem I have. If I, if I find out, okay, I have a problem with my current, current tools, and somebody points me, or I find out, hey, Garrett has a solution for that, I would use it. So far, this has not happened, which is not a blame blaming on Garrett. I don't know. Maybe it has a solution for a problem. I don't know. I have the problem yet, so okay. can't tell. Yeah, I agree. But I think, uh, I haven't really worked into it, I think patchwork might be the right approach. It's one half of the yeah, I think we can build something on top of that, although I once in a while tried updating patchwork or adding features, but it's not my program. I, <laughs> I can't find anything, I, I'm not uh, able to change it, but uh, the mailing list is pretty open for feature requests, I love that. Uh, 
another thing, yeah, it's pretty similar. Uh, optimize tasks. Um, be aware of that. Be aware that hey, I'm doing that again. I did that. I do this too often. Can I optimize it? It usually pays off. And key key thing for that is, of course, have your tools ready. Organizations, they can do something. <laughs> I'm talking here about companies like chip vendors or organizations like Linaro, Linux Foundation, or what, whatever. Um, I think they also have a role to play here. First, if they have developers, uh, it'd be great if they allow them to, be, to take part in uh, quality assurance during their work time not only to be concentrated on their driver for their deadlines, but also give them some free time to, to actually work on, on, on generic things that will make them, uh, that will improve their skills. And I think there are enough people um, who actually enjoy doing this if they were allowed to. They, I know some who are afraid of doing that because they don't know if the manager would accept that, but from their point of view, they would love to do that. And I think it would be good to just let them. It will be a win-win-win situation even. Kernel gains, developer gains, company gains. Um, I, I will be also more strict about internal education. I mean, it's sure, if there's, I'm, I'm responsible for my subsystem and if there's a developer not knowing my subsystem, I, I will teach the things needed. But I will be more strict about teaching basic kernel uh, submission guidelines. If it's not for private people, if, if there's somebody just trying to do something, okay, I'll be there. But if I know there's one or more people from a company who know all this stuff, I will be more aggressively pointing these people to, 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 uh, to get this education in-house. Because I think that's mu too much of a burden for a maintainer. And it would be nice if organizations would, some do. Um, it's not they are all bad. But to do this more in-house. I will pay attention to that. Speaking of the fast forward button again, um, realize that we all understand that this would be a nice thing to have uh, drivers in as soon as possible, but given the current workload and overload, uh, things might take time. I think a number of companies are, try are getting to understand that, but of course, the best situation where it would be increasing the manpower or the bandwidth so we get best of both worlds. And what I would really, really love is that maintainer, being a maintainer should be a job on its own. I know a number of people who are doing this, like my, I do in my free time. There are people who are doing this, well, kind of aside to their regular job. And only very, very few people are directly paid to be a maintainer. And taking into account the importance of this job and that, uh, how, what it does to the Linux ecosystem, I think it's, it's great to have that as a job on its own. So if there's a talented person who is really good at maintaining and playing a key role, uh, I think it would be nice to, to really hire that person as a maintainer. It would be great if that could be done by an independent organization like more or less in the Naro Linux Foundation, like as it's done with Linus Torvalds and Greg Crow Hartman, that are, those are good examples. So you you're out of the question, ah, okay, this maintainer is hired by that company, that sounds political. But on the other hand, uh, we're developers and I trust most people with who are maintainers to have enough credentiality that they will take care of their subsystem first. In general, I think it's the item to improve the situation, to, to make maintainer a, a full-time job. Not really like uh, putting it on your web page. We are looking for a maintainer for the MTD subsystem. Of course, you should approach people who are able to do this, who have uh, enough merit gathered to do this. But it could be a way to ask them, OK, we're funding the work if you look after the subsystem. I try to come up to update the graph a little bit uh, from before. It's a bit vague. Um, what that means is that from what I know, which is limited, 
um, green fields are the parts where, where I think people are more or less paid to do maintaining that part. There is some, can you see it? No, not very well. This is something between uh, yellow and green. So there are asked to, do, uh, to look after that part in the Linux kernel during their work time. So it's not fully directly paid for it, but somehow expected. Yellow means they people or subsystems where the maintainers are um, where the, the employees uh, employers are okay that they do a certain set aside their regular work on the subsystem, and red means uh, uh, all the maintaining is done unpaid or as a freelance effort. That doesn't have to be directly related to the latencies we saw before, because here Ethernet is red, and uh, you know it's still not the, the worst subsystem of all, but I think if we look at that, uh, there should be a lot more yellow and green. There are quite, here will flash the MTD subsystem. That's a crucial part um, for, for lots of boards and, and devices out there. And I think it's quite, quite risky to have that red, like with some other subsystems. I mean, Watchdog. Uh, that should be also a well-maintained subsystem. N no complaint again this, against the maintainer. He's doing a hell of a job was in what he can, but his resources are limited. So that's what I'm going to say. We need more manpower, more bandwidth in that. Uh, part is to recruit more people. Part is um, to get... Uh, maintaining as a, as a job on its own where people are allowed to concentrate on that. That are my conclusion, conclusions, assumptions, and we have two or three minutes for questions. Thank you for your attention so far, and let's go for it. I think it's the next step, and I think we'll be able to do it. <laughs> Thank you. So, oh, yes. Uh, if, uh, let's say that I have a big trade-off and I want to get to it. Yes. Uh, what can I do to help the maintainer to do the process as fast as as confident as possible? You have a big driver and want to get it upstream as soon as possible. Um, I have a good shot. Try to get uh, reviews on your own. Um, maybe, maybe find someone else who's experienced in that subsystem and ask that person if, if he or she is willing to do a review. Um, try to get users who say, okay, here's my driver, please test it. So what, what I said about these tags, act by, reviewed by, tested by, try to get people motivated to donate them to your driver so that the maintainer has an idea, okay, people are using this, there's at least some people having a glimpse, had a glimpse on that already, that raises a level of trust. And also try to review other people's caches also, because motivates them to review your caches, so you can help these things up. And if it's really urgent, you can hire people to do that.
Um, there are two questions, actually, in, um, which I hear from that. The first is, uh, how many patches are dealing with bugs and drivers? And this is pretty pretty hard to find out, actually. I mean, there's there's the patch count statistics on LWN, and people are paying attention to it somehow. They are criticizing it somehow because the sheer amount doesn't tell much. It could be a large rewrite series, and but it's still it's common commonly accepted that finding out if a patch is useful is incredibly hard to determine. So, of course, everyone wants to have a graph. So who did the most useful pa or useful patches? But yeah. Yeah, so you're saying if we did more testing, we would have to deal less with bugs. Yeah, exactly. And if you have any standard testing flow for each subsystem, then if you say, okay, let's run these tests, then we will have less bugs than we have right now. Normally, we can only run um, build tests. Because <coughs> not, every, not every subsystem maintainer has all the models. Yeah, I'm not saying that the, that the subsystem maintainer should run the test. I'm saying that the driver that what what he what we were talking about uh, the day before was like that more or less every subsystem should have a test module so that you can if you wrote a driver you load this module on top and then it tests some basic set of functionality somehow Yeah, for example, for I, I for I square C, you would definitely have a, a setup, a hardware setup. You had to, you would have to have some certain slaves with a special configuration to to figure things. Yeah. But you can provide some user space utilities, like you say that um, the new submitter, patch submitter, please run this test suite. You have to do this setup. It's it's in the readme. Yeah, yeah, that would. That's what I, I think it's a thing worth considering. Um, I'd need to see. If, I can't only speak for I square C. What what a good setup would be, and if I what I would need to expect from people. I put it on my to do list. <laughs> you are trying to do this for for the can subsystem. So if you submit the driver. You can ask them, let me run this test, and what's the output of this program, and shortcut the wires. That's good. See what's going on. That's that's actually what we do in. So how many bug fix patches do you have? Has it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. That's that's the architectural thing of a maintainer, right? Yeah. You need you need to set up. Yeah. Committers. That's a difference. As a rule of thumb, I'd say up to driver level. You can be a maintainer for a driver. If it's a huge, large driver, uh, I think network drivers can be really huge. Maybe that can be split up as well into subtypes. But as a rule of thumb, in i square I'd be happy if there's somebody saying, OK, I will take care of that driver. That's OK. And that's, that's absolutely worth an entries in the maintainer's file, which is important, because then the script get maintainer will 
uh, put you on CC and I know, okay, I, I won't have to do to deal with that patch. This is, and now for small subsystems, it might pay off to be a co-maintainer, like what, Watchdog, for example. It's, uh, it's not rocket science, it's just neat, it has to be done. Yeah. After you gain some trust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too hungry. I will answer more questions, but if you're all hungry, I'll let you go. <laughs> yeah, that's it then. Thank you very much.